One's black ink. How y'all doing? We, we good. good. We yeah, out here. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. it. Yeah. yeah. Let's what go. up, you guys? What up? What's your relationship like with the um, black ink crew from Caesar Shop? Like, yeah, because we had Duchess up here a couple weeks ago. Mm. Yeah, she be a wild She was turned up. She yeah, yeah. No, she wasn't. She, no. She, she, yes and no. I mean, she didn't say anything negative. She was just really explaining her side. So now we're going to go into Sassy. Oh, we should talk about yeah, it. We go- I went to the shop one day. And this was when we were wrapping up the first season, like pretty much done. And at this time, when we had that break between the first and second season, everybody was like out of the state. Like everybody was traveling, doing bookings and gigs and club appearances or whatever like that. So we never saw each other for like a month and a half in between that time. Mm -hmm. So before that time, the last time I saw her was at Black Ink and shit was cool. Like she was like, yo, I'm doing this prom thing out in North Carolina. You should come out there with me, blah, blah, blah. Everything was good. I never saw her after that until... The episode that you guys saw when her and C's walked into the shop and she walked right by everybody, that was the first time I saw her. So that reaction, all that was legit. Like, I didn't know what the hell happened in that time. So when I finally got to sit down with her and we had that one-on-one and I'm asking her, like, yo, what the fuck happened? Mm -hmm. She's like, she was upset about an interview that my mom and I had did. And she went... The whole time when she's explaining to me what she's upset about, she's like, you know, you bashed me and Caesar's relationship and said that we could be the downfall of Black Ink. And what I made very clear to her was that regard. And she's like, she had a problem with the fact that she saw me that day after I did the interview. And she's like, if you felt, if you knew you said something about me, you should have told me Mm -hmm. because I saw you that day. My problem with her and what I expressed to her on that episode, there was nothing that I said in that interview that I had not said to Duchess in the beginning. Me and, me and her went to Vegas, mm-hmm. and I was doing her makeup in that scene and all that. Right. And when her and C's decided they was going to go on that date and they was going to make it official, I said to her, Duchess, you got to be careful because when you mix business and pleasure, shit can either go real good or it can go real bad. Just keep that in mind. So the fact mm-hmm. that I said that in an interview, after I already said that to your face, I didn't feel the need to come to you and be like, yo, I was on camera and I said this. Because it was real shit. I had already said it to your face. And I didn't, it wasn't nothing malicious. That's real shit. You mix business and pleasure. It's going to go either one way or another way. Mm-hmm. On the show, it portrays that UNC has been friends for almost 20 years, 15 plus. Well, it's so funny because me and Sassy's stories are so goddamn similar. Mm-hmm. Mm. Because what happened with us is... Well, me and Caesar, that's and, all right. God damn it, you know what? I said I was going to start blacking in my interviews. I'm going to start blacking. As you should. As you should um, on This Is 50 Radio. Welcome to the disco. The thing Hello. About, the thing about us is, like, in the beginning, like, blacking wasn't always owned by Caesar. And this is a fact. Mm. That, yeah, Duchess go, said that. You can go around New that. York City and you can ask this. And it was owned by somebody else. And I was the person that they put in charge. They basically put money up for a business and said, Puma, handle it. And it was being handled. Like we, I bought Amari Stoudemire on Atlantic Avenue on 113th. You can look that up. It's a Nike commercial with French Montana. Mm. Um, you can look up Black Ink Gallery. You can see ASAP Ferg, before he was ASAP Ferg, did a gallery opening in Black Ink. Nice. I did all this by my goddamn self. Nobody helped. It was me. Mm-hmm. Now, at the end of it, all of a sudden, left field, somebody comes about a show. Now, the person that came with the show, that was actually Teddy's Peoples. Okay, you talking Fact. about Teddy Rucks. Yeah, that okay. was his Peoples that actually came to bring the show, you know what I mean? And shit was going real, we shot the sizzle reel. You know, you're thinking, well, maybe. There's a million tattoo shows. But right. all of a sudden, what happens? We hit. And right when we hit, we find out that money was fucked up and somebody wasn't paying the rent. And all of a sudden, you're losing your business, but you got a TV show. Now, nobody wanted to admit who was taking what. No, it was all a bunch of other extra shit with bigger people. Mm, you know uh-huh. what I mean? And at the end of the day, Caesar stepped up. I can give him that. It was a scumbag way at first that I thought about it, but at the end of the day, he stepped up to the plate, got that bread, owned the business. So now you are the owner of Black Ink. You won. You got it. Now, you would think that he would have been humbled with it and, you know, show love. Nah, it didn't go that way. It went left. And it was all about Caesar. I am the boss. When you know when somebody starts screaming, I'm the boss, 
<laughs> that's when you know it's bad. Now, Sassy says, we've owned Ink124. Have I ever said that word? Mm-mm. Do I scream that word and I'm the boss? Mm-mm. I don't like that word. Because you know what I mean? Nobody's the boss of anything. You're supposed to be a leader. Lead by example. You know what I mean? I like that. I like that. So, you know what I mean? Times were going by. You start filming the season one of a show. I was actually feeling away through the whole season one. Mm-hmm. Trust me, I hated going into Black Ink because of how things went. So what I did was try to separate myself from then. I wasn't going to open up a business. What I tried to do was with my clothing line and everything else. Now, as time is going by, you can already see Caesar is feeling that this show is about him because he's the boss. <laughs> so you're just watching it happen. And I told Sassy, I gave it a heads up. I said, get ready because these two are about to mastermind some shit. Mm-hmm. And they're going to start deleting all of us because they're going to try to Jim and Chrissy us. <gasps> Yo. He said that. These are facts. Mm. Facts. And all of a sudden, <laughs> it started happening. You started seeing how they moved, right? And then, like, me and Sassy just, I'm like, yo, let's just keep doing what we do, sis. Then they start going online, talking they shit. Sis, don't even say nothing to them. Just keep doing what we do. Are you going to be tattooing J.R. Smith? Uh, actually, I have my homie Amon Shepard come by the shop already. Him and uh, Young Chop came through one day. Oh, nice. okay. And I actually text J.R. This Sassy. Stop fronting on me. <gasps> Just saying. Hold I on. told him to come through to the shop. And he, and he, and he. Which shop are we referring to? Are we Ink 124, Ink baby. Ink 124. Would you give okay. J.R. Smith a run? No. What? You really? We could go to the strip club and turn the fuck up, though, and smoke a L anytime, but no. I'm not, no. You would never give no man a chance? I didn't say that. I just wanted okay, to give Okay, not J.R. Smith. Wait Understood. a minute. Wait a minute. This wait, wait, is an exclusive, so wait. Whoa! Hold on. Because, you know, I know Sassy like the ladies. So there is a possibility you would give a dude a try? I've had a dude at the See this, let me, okay, this is what happens. When when TV captures moments in your life mm-hmm. and that's all that they see and that, that's what they show the world, that's what the that's what that's the only thing that the world has. That's the only image that they have. Right. But there's no interview, there's nothing where you can find that says where well, I say out of my mouth that I'm a lesbian. Okay. You know, mm. I just love women and I appreciate women. I, I and I do appreciate. And she gets the people. bitches too. Yeah, I've you know, like her. I, you know, I don't get wrong. <laughs> like I know a good man and I appreciate a good man. You know, and I know what it, you know, and I know what a good dude is. But like, I love women. Like I cannot, I cannot. Let, they're just amazing. And we got the beautiful you know Rocky what? Thunder in the building. Hi, hi, the unofficial host tonight because I'm asking y'all some questions too. Yeah, you can. Oh, ask. Okay, <laughs> my question to you because we spoke mm-hmm. off camera. And no one really got to know the reason why in last season of Love and Hip Hop New York, Mm -hmm. why you and the ladies, Tahiri and Rashida, were not really getting along. And you revealed something to me that I thought was shocking and it didn't show that. Do you remember what that was? I remember what it Mm -hmm. was, but I don't know if you want to. That's fine. You you said that they were talking about your son. Well, what happened very early, very early in the um, taping, like what a lot of people don't know, it takes eight months to film a show like that. And what right. you get is bits and pieces. You get 15 episodes, an hour apiece. And in each segment that you see, it's three minutes. Mm. So, but in that three minutes that you see, you don't realize that we had filmed for maybe five, six, hours. seven hours. Yeah. You know, people are drunk as a skunk at some points. And so things get really hot. And my second day of filming, the first day I ever filmed was with Joe. And that scene got cut. The second day I filmed, I was put in a house with Tahiri, Winter, Rashida, and uh, me and it was a three against one situation and to hear you was the first one to jump the gun and bring my son up and from that point on i was like holy shit so she brought my son up and i do you know why she brought your son up you know people know that people know your triggers Mm -hmm. you know what i mean people know that you have you have a soft spot and i made that very well known in my interviews while signing my contract there's certain things that i never wanted to happen one my son would never be a part of this show because i already know this platform isn't built to show oh she's a great mother and she right. does this and that so my son everybody knows that's off topic i don't care jesus christ came down and said talk about her son you don't do that so on the second day of filming tahiri popped off and that was the first thing out of her mouth and i was the first one to, i was ready to go and mm-hmm. she immediately bowed down and was like i'm sorry so i was like okay we have a general understanding but you know 24 hours later i was still hot and here comes the pool scene. So, fast forward. We got Love and Hip Hop New York. It just premiered on Monday. Yes. <clears throat> Are you going to be on the new season? Absolutely not. You're not. I had producers calling my phone up until last week. They still have maybe two or three weeks left of filming. And I refuse. Okay. I refuse. The storylines. Um, what honest- would be the storyline? I'm not allowed to say that. I am contracted oh, okay, for okay. six seasons. A lot got of people you. don't know that. They are volunteers. Six yes, they, they got me in early. And what's funny is when they first gave me my contract, I asked them, why do you guys want me so bad? 
oh, we want you for dialogue. We want someone who's not a hip-hop baby mama, who's not a girlfriend, who's not a jump-off, someone who ac- actually bring dialogue. Because I was in this game for 10 years before I went to Love & Hip Hop. And um, long story short, it didn't go that way. Right. And now I'm like, I would never do that again. I did um, However, the, the, the last straw was, I did the reunion and okay. in front of a live audience. And they had set me up to do a polygraph exam. First of, all, first of all, they tell me, oh, we're doing two days of a reunion. We're going to do a rehearsal. So I went in ready to do the rehearsal. And I get there, and it's only me and someone with the polygraph test and security. And I'm like, what the hell? They set me up. And by contract, I had to do the polygraph test. Well, test. what did they ask you? Because I don't think I remember questions. that. Exactly my point. They asked me three questions. Have you ever slept with Joe Budden? Are you jealous of Tahiri? Are you in love with Joe Budden? I said no to all three answers. All three answers came back. I was telling the truth. So this was revealed in front of a live audience. So I thought this would air on TV because it was done on the reunion and they left it out. Can I ask you a question? Because um, when I put up this picture <laughs> oh. and Doggy Diamonds mm-hmm. of ForbesDVD.com mm-hmm. said, fuck Rocky Thunder. What's that I about? I just want to know what's that about. Da- a dude? Yeah. Yeah. I know what that's about. Uh, well, what happened there? Because I don't, nothing, I don't really first know. First of all, he's a faggot. <laughs> who goes on? Who goes on? And not in that sense, but he's a pussy hole. Put it that way. This dude walks up to me. We're at a really nice, some kind of exhibit thing. And he comes up to me with his camera and just starts going in, like just being real tragic and real messy and nasty. Like a girl. I'm like, son. First of all, he was in my face with a camera the whole time. It's just like, be respectful. I'm having a private conversation over here, you in my face. And I already told you two, three times, like, back up off me. I got you, I'm gonna give you the interview. But no, he's still being disrespectful in my face. So then I'm sitting down, and I don't even remember what the first questions were, but it was just, it was too messy and it was too girly, so I handled him like a bitch, so fuck you. You told him that? Yeah. Okay. The problem was, I don't know him, I didn't know who he was working for, nothing. The problem was is that he was being really disrespectful, filming my conversations with people. Not even, uh, just uh, introduce yourself. Mm-hmm. But then I sit down and the first questions you asked me, it was just kind of, I just felt like he was working for, for, for an enemy. It was just not cool to me. So it was just like, go back and don't, dog, learn how to do interviews. Oh, I have such and such many followers. I don't give a fuck how many followers you have. Like, you can't get an interview with me and I done gave 50 interviews tonight. So th- obviously there's a problem. So I wasn't feeling his energy, but God bless him. Cool. I okay. just wanted to know what that stemmed from. And mind you, I don't. Need, there's no beef. I don't know the kid. I met him that day, and me and him right. kind of had. So for him to go online just confirms once again you have bitchism about you. Man, the fuck up. Stop pissing on your balls and get your shit together. But one thing I don't like. One, I, I don't like. I don't like just blatant disrespect for no reason. I don't just come out swinging at people for no reason. Like you're a man, right? Chill out. That interview, whatever that was, was months ago. Son, you still mad? Mm -hmm. Step to me like a man. Hey, Rocky, I'm such and such from such and such. And this is what I want. Cool. I do it all day long. That's that's what I do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So still, 10 months later, you still feeling some kind of way? Change the drawers, B. Change the drawers. Spending is my hobby. I'm bowling. Sorry. Lately, I've been having dreams of crushing everybody. I'm going to see you motherfuckers at the top. I'm coming in my mind. So nothing but the quiet. They thought this shit was done, but the grind don't stop. I'm running through one, one after one. Cause I'm hot. I'm going to hit you, hunt like the drum. Make it drop. Then I'm looking for another one that takes my.